Today we're looking at transformations with technology. As you can see from the objectives, we will be using a graphing calculator to explore, explore some effects of transformations on our parent functions. Students will then summarize the effects of transformations with the appropriate verbal description. So it's kind of pick up where we left off on Friday and from that assignment on float my boat. So we're still looking at transformations. The only difference is today we're using our calculator to see those transformations. So as I mentioned, if you haven't done so already, we need to reset our calculator, second plus, seven, one, two. Make sure you do that for me. Once you've reset your calculator, you'll notice on the top of the next page, or on your first page there, <laughs> they gave us a specific window to work in. Notice up here they told us to use a x minimum of negative 8, a y x maximum of positive 8, and then the y values are negative 5 and positive 5. So let's go ahead and set that up. Go to your window. And what we're going to do is use negative 8 and positive 8 for the x. Don't change the scale, leave it 1. Your y minimum is negative 5, your y maximum is positive 5. So when you get done, your screen should look like this here. We just want to make sure all the graphs that we get today are going to match up with what we have on our handout. All right, once you have that window set up, you can go ahead and clear out of there. Quick, check and load. And we're ready to begin. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at something called vertical translation. It's up here at the very top. Vertical translation. Now, it gets a little tricky here, so I'm going to go real slow to start off with. They want me to compare y equals f of x with y equals f of x plus 2. And the way we're going to do that is using our calculator. But we're going to have to be careful on how we type this in. What they want me to do is in my calculator, enter this right here into y2. Everybody go to your calculator. Let's go to y equals. We're going to skip over y1. Don't type anything in there yet. And we're going to go straight to y2. And what we're going to type in is y1 of x plus 2. Now in order to get this y1 right here, guys, it tells us that you're going to need to go to the bars button. So find the button that says bar. It's right next to clear. Right here. That's the bar. Then it says move over to the right where it says Y bar. So move over to the right. Then select the very first one, function. Here's where you're going to find Y1, Y2, Y3, and so on. The only one we're going to be using today is Y1. So go ahead and select that first, Y1. And notice now it shows up in our Y2. Next to that, we're going to put X in parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that. X in parentheses. And then we're going to type in a plus 2. So here's what we should have in our calculator. So what we're doing is we're telling the calculator, whatever I type into y1, whatever that is, you're going to add to that 2. This way we don't have to do the work ourselves manually. So we're telling the calculator exactly what to do for us. Okay? So let's go back up to y1 now. Now notice we've got three different graphs, three different scenarios that we're going to be looking at. The first one says x plus 1. That's what we're going to type into y1. So go ahead and do that for me. x plus 1. But don't hit graph yet. Don't hit graph yet. Because if I hit graph right now, I'm going to get two different graphs, and it's going to be kind of hard to tell them apart. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the far left of y1, where that little line you see there. We're going to go until it's blinking. When you have that thing blinking, you're going to hit enter just one time. And what's going to happen is that line now became thicker. Now it's going to be a little easier to tell the two graphs apart because you're going to have one thicker line and another thinner line. And the way we're going to do it so we can tell them apart on our sheet is we're going to use one with a pencil. We're going to draw one with a pencil. And the other one we're going to use our map color. This is why I asked you to get a map color. If you've got highlighters, markers you want to use, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay. So, what you're going to do for me is the first equation, the dark one, you're going to do it in pencil. The other thinner line, you're going to do that in your uh, map color. So let's go ahead and take a look now that we have that. See what it looks like. Okay. Alright, so these are the two graphs. Again, notice how one is darker than the other. That darker one is the original function. That's what we have at y1. We're going to come over here and draw that. There it is. 
The pencil is the first one, the darker one. The lighter one, the thinner line, is going to be what we draw with our mouth focus. And that's going to be this one right here. And try and do it as accurate as possible. Do the best that you can. So you should have two graphs, one in pencil, one with a map focus. Trying to match up with what we have on our calculator. All right, we're going to repeat that process for part B now. So we're going to go back to our calculators. We're going to go to y equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to change that x plus 1. And we're going to change that to an x squared. So I'm just going to type right over that. I'm going to type in x squared. I'm going to delete all that extra stuff. I don't need it. Okay, so this is what I have. Of course, at this point, everybody should already know what x squared looks like, right? What does an x squared look like? It's our uh, u-shape. It's our crowd. So we should see a u-shape. As a matter of fact, you should see two u-shapes. We got one in y1, and we got one in y2. So let's take a look at the graph. So there's the first u-shape, and here comes the second u-shape. We're going to draw both of those. Remember, the darker one, that's the original function. That's what we have in y1. That thinner one, the second one, is what we have in y2. The graph looks something like this here. And we've got one more tryout. We got c, 1 divided by x. Anybody recognize that function? What is that one called? What's the name of that one? Rational. What's the graph going to look like for a rational? That's right. We got two curves. One in the first quadrant. The other one is in the third quadrant. So what we're going to do is we're going to change what I have in y1. I'm just going to type right over this. I'm going to do one divided by x. I'm going to get rid of that square. I'm going to delete it. Don't need that one. There it is. One divided by x. I'm going to get graph. And this is the graph of our rational parent function. We've got a darker one. That's the original, the parent function. And then we also have one that's a little lighter. That's the one that is in Y2. All right, so we should have a graph that looks kind of like this. Make sure you do it in two different colors so we can tell them apart. So now that we've done three different graphs, what is it doing to our first function? It's moving it what? It's moving our graph up <coughs> to you. So all the students taking each of these graphs and moving it up to you. And what's causing that moving up to you is that, that plus two that you see there. So, and we talked about that already, right? So when you look at the next one, number two there, the only difference in this one is it says minus two. So what is the minus two going to be doing? Move it down. Move it down. Or at least it should. Let's try this out. Let's go to the next one here. We're going to go back to our calculator. We're going to go to y2, and we're going to change one little thing. We're going to change that minus or that plus sign I'm going to change it to a minus. <laughs> there it is, minus. I'm going to come back up to y1. And we're going to start all over again. We're going to start with a. We're going to start with x plus 1. x plus 1. Graph. And here's what I get this time. The darker one, again, we're doing in pencil. The lighter one, we're doing with our map color. That one original. And then we got this new one. Go ahead and do the other two for me as well. Do that C and C form.
Go ahead and do C for me as well. When it's all said and done, the graphs that we did should look like this. Notice B, we still got two U shapes here. Notice over here C, we still got that same rational graph. We still got those two curves. The only difference here is instead of moving the graph up to units, this time we've moved the graph down to units. So adding moves the graph up, subtracting moves the graph down. So at the bottom of your page where it says generalization, it wants to know what happens to the graph of the function when you add a constant to the functional rule. Here's what I need you to write for me, guys. We're going to shift the graph up or down. However, the term I like here is this. We're going to translate the graph up or down. Of course, you guys know from geometry, the word translate, all that means is what? Slide. Slide. We're just sliding the graph up or we're sliding the graph down. Translate it up, translate it down. Adding moves it up, subtracting moves it down. Just like we did with the boat, we can move the boat up, we can move the boat down. <clears throat> By the way, when we took a look at that boat, I said if we add to the y values or subtract from the y values, we move the graph up and down. Remember me saying that? When you add or subtract from the y, you move the graph up and down. Well, When you see f of x, guys, f of x is the same thing as a what? Y. y. When you see right over here, I'm not doing to the y, I'm subtracting 2, which is why we're moving down. So it's still the same concept. We're still doing the same thing as we did with our boat. All right, let's move to the next one. We're going to be doing some more adding and subtracting, but this time instead of adding or subtracting to the function, or to the f of x, this time we're going to be adding subtracting to the x, the number, uh, the value inside the parentheses. So, let's get the calculator. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's go to y2. That minus 2 needs to be inside the parentheses, so I'm going to change this here. Minus 2, parentheses. So there it is. We're going to start with the first one x plus 1, and we're going to graph, see what happens. Alright, so we've got the original parent function. Then we got the, uh, the next one there, which is the one that looks like this. Go ahead and do B and C for me so we can take a look at their graph before we say anything.
feels like most of you have your graphs there. As you can see from the graph, what's happening this time? Where is the graph moving? Shifting to the left or right? Right. Notice how each of the original functions has been moved to the right. How many times has it been moved to the right? How many times? Two times. Two times. Two times. Notice each of these graphs has been moved over to the right two times. And that's because of that minus two you see in the parentheses. All right, go ahead and do the next one for me, number four. Change the minus sign to a plus sign there in parentheses. Do A, B, and C. And let's see what happens here. It looks like the majority of you are done with uh, number four here. What's happening now? What's the plus two doing to the graph this time? It's moving to the left. It's moving it to the left. And how many times is it moving it to the left? Two units. All right, so it's just the opposite of number three. Number three, we're moving to the right. Now we're moving to the left. So down there at the bottom, let's go ahead and summarize what we've just found here. All that's happening is we're translating the graph horizontally left and right. Just sliding this thing left or right. We're moving to the right if it's minus. We're moving to the left if it's addition. Just sliding it around. Now notice where we add and subtract does make a difference. If it's inside the parentheses, it's up and down. If it's inside the parentheses, it's sideways. So where you add and subtract will make a difference. All right, guys, now we're going to move on to number five. Now, notice up here at the top of your page, number five, notice it says we're going to be looking at something called vertical dilation. We're going to be looking at stretching and compressing. So now instead of moving the graph sideways, left and right, or up and down, now we're going to look at stretching and compressing the graph. So on this first one here, number five. First thing we've got to do is go to y equals, and in our y2, that's going to change. What we're doing now is multiplying by 3. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to insert a 3 in front of my y here. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut so they don't have to retype the whole thing. You can insert things on your calculus, and the way you do that is by going to second and then delete. Second, delete. And now anything that I type in, is going to go in front of that Y, which in my case, I need a 3. So I'm going to type in a 3, and it inserts it for me. Notice that the Y1 is still there. Now, I can go ahead and get rid of the minus 2. I don't need that anymore. Let me delete that. And there it is. That's what I should have in Y2 now. And then we can go ahead and repeat the process like we've done with the others. In Y1, we're going to start with X plus 1. We're going to graph it and see what happens this time. So I do all of them. A, B, and C.
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number five. What happens here is not quite as obvious as the others that we've seen so far. It's pretty easy to see that we're moving left, right, up, or down. This one, maybe not so obvious. So the question is, what is multiplying by three doing to the graph? What is it doing? Anybody notice anything? It's getting steeper. It's getting steeper. Well, that is true, I guess, especially for A there. Anything else? What? Thinner. Narrower. All right, I like it. Keep it coming. What else? Sounds good. Anybody else? Now, it's kind of hard to tell with A and C, but if you look at B here, it's a little bit more obvious. Notice the black one. That's the original function. The red one there is the one where we had it multiplied by 3. So notice it's a little bit narrow. Why? What made it narrow? Well, remember, up here at the top, I said we're looking at vertical dilation. We're looking at stretching and compressing. So here's what's happening, guys. If I look at B right here, if I take the U shape and I grab it from the bottom and the top, and then I start to pull on that thing vertical. What's going to happen to the U shape the more and more I pull on it? It's going to stretch. But what is it going to look like as I'm stretching it out? Thinner. It's going to look narrow. That's what's happening right here. Okay, I'm taking it from the top and the bottom vertically and I'm stretching it out. Well, I'm doing the same thing to my linear here. I'm grabbing it from the bottom and the top and I'm stretching it out, which is why it looks a little steeper here. Same thing on C. I'm grabbing it from top and bottom and I'm stretching it out. So that's what's happening on each of these three things. I'm stretching it from top to bottom. Now, obviously, the larger this number is, the more we're going to stretch it out. Right now, we're multiplying by 3, so I'm really not stretching it out too much. But can you imagine if that was a 20 instead? Then I'd be stretching it out even more. So what would that U-shape look like if I stretch it out even more? And look even skinnier, even more narrow. Okay? So that's what the 3 is doing to our graph. Let's go to the next one here. Next one, we're going to multiply by one-third. Let's go to our calculator, and let's change that three. Let's change it to a one-third. Again, I'm going to insert. So second, delete. Parentheses, one, divided by, sorry, got the three, uh, the three parentheses. I'm going to delete that three. There it is. So there's my one-third y1 of x, and then go ahead and do all three of those parts, so x, uh, a, b, and c. <laughs> By the way, guys, all of these transformations that we're discussing, eventually you're going to need to get all of these memorized. As a matter of fact, the next test that we have all of these transformations will be on that set, and I do expect you to have them all memorized by this. All right, as you're working on these on number six here, you should notice that just the opposite of what happened on number five is now happening on number six. Instead of getting skinnier or narrower, now it's doing the opposite. Now it's getting 
why? The question is why? What's happening this time? Why is the graph getting why? Well, what's the opposite of stretching something out? Compressing. So this time what we're doing is if I take this B, uh, the U shape there, it's like we're stepping on that thing. When you squash it down, the more you squash on it, the wider it's going to become. So what we're doing is we're compressing this thing vertically. Okay? So down here at the bottom, let's go ahead and generalize what we found. What happens to the graph when you multiply a function or the function of rule by A? Here's what I need you to write. We're going to be specific here. The graph stretches vertically, but it only stretches vertically when the a value is greater than 1. In other words, if it's a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, 6, anything greater than 1 is going to stretch your graph out. Stretch it vertically. And the larger and larger that number becomes, the more and more you stretch it out. On the other hand, if you're looking at a number between 0 and 1, such as that 1 third or 1 half, anything between 0 and 1 is going to do the opposite. It's going to compress vertically. Compress vertically. So vertically stretch. Vertically compressed. Now on the next page, we're going to be multiplying again. But this time, all the multiplying that we do is going to occur inside the parentheses. It's going to be inside next to the x. So I want you to go ahead and do number 7 and 8 for me. 7 and 8. 7 and 8. And then I want to see if you can go ahead and write down what is happening for me on 7 and 8. <laughs>
Looks like everybody's got their graphs, or pretty much got their graphs. If we look at number seven, I'm not going to look at all the graphs, but I want to point out B there. Notice that number seven B. Notice it looks a lot like number five B. Everybody look at number five. Look at B. Would you say those graphs look very similar to each other? Yeah. Notice how they're both skinny, right? However, are we doing the same thing again on number seven? No. We're not doing the same thing, guys. What are we doing this time? Well, if you look at the top of your page, because this time we're looking at horizontal dilation. This time we're looking at stretching and compressing horizontal. So why is this graphing looking a little skinnier? Why does it look more narrow? Because it's compressing. But it's compressing it from the side. So what we're doing is we're squeezing it in from the sides. And the more we squeeze it in from those sides, the skinnier the graph is going to look. Okay. So even though the graphs look very similar, how we're getting there is totally different. Now we're squeezing it in from the sides. Which with that said, if we take a look at the next one here, number eight. Number eight, we've got the original parent function. This one looks a little wider. Now if we compare it to number six, it looks a lot like number six there. However, how we got there is totally different. How did we get there? Why is this graph looking wider this time? Well, we're not, nope, we're not compressing it. We're okay. stretching it, but we're stretching it horizontal. Uh -huh. Like we're taking the sides of this U-shape and we're pulling it apart. The more we pull apart, the wider it's going to look. So even, the graph, even though the graphs look very similar, how we're getting there is totally different. So we need to make sure we keep these straight. So down at the bottom, let's go ahead and generalize what's happening here. We're going to stretch the graph horizontal. If the A value is between 0 and 1, let's stretch it horizontally. If it's between 0 and 1, but we're going to compress it horizontally if A is greater than 1. And how much we stretch or compress will be determined by what that value is. The bigger the number is, the more we're going to stretch it or compress it. Alright, we're going to turn the page here. Number 9 and number 10, it looks like that's all we're going to have time for. Maybe two more here. 9 and number 10, what I need to do is go ahead and finish those up for me. 9 and 10. Now we're looking at reflections. We're looking at that negative sign in front of the function. Or the negative sign in front of the x. Go ahead and give me the graph. And see you can summarize down there at the bottom A and B If you're not sure how to type it in your calculator, let me know so I can go show you.
of the dark graph at the original function. The lighter one, the thinner one, is the new function. When you're answering those questions down at the bottom, guys, make sure you're very specific there. When you're doing A and B going at the bottom, be very specific. Alright guys, we're almost out of time. I want to finish these up, so let's go ahead and take a look at these. Number nine, these are the graphs that we're getting. Remember, the black one is the original function, the red one is our uh, one that has the negative sign on it. So the question is, what's happening? Can anybody figure out what's happening here? It's flipping over the x-axis, but we got a better word for flip. What's another word? Reflect. Reflect. So what's happening here is we have a reflection, and that reflection occurs over the x-axis. So everything that's on the top of the x-axis is now on the bottom, and everything that's at the bottom is now on the top. That's that flip that you're talking about. Alright, and number 10 here. Number 10, we have some graphs that look something like this here. It's kind of tricky on this one. Especially with that B there. Now you do have two graphs, it just happens that they're both on top of each other. So, what the heck is going on with this one here? Yeah, there's also a reflection, but this time the reflection occurs over the y axis. So, on this U shape here, everything that's on the right is now on the left, and everything that's on the left is now on the right, which ends up being exactly the same thing anyway. So, this is why you only see one graph, because they turn out to be the same thing. Over here on C, again, everything that's on the right is over here on the left, and everything that's on the left is now over here on the right. So all we have is a reflection over the y-axis. So let's go ahead and summarize that. A, part A, multiplying the functional rule by negative 1 to reflect the graph over the x-axis. <laughs> reflects over the x-axis. And that part B, replace the x with a negative x, replace it over the y-axis. Finish that up for me. Now, we didn't get to do the last page, so tomorrow when you come in here, that's the first thing you're going to do for me. Finish up that last page. The absolute value, along with the other assignments and other All right, let's go ahead and put up our calculators, map colors.